Hello friends and welcome back to Philippians, Paul's letter from lockdown. Paul in prison has been telling us how everything he once based his life on, he now counts rubbish for the sake of knowing Jesus Christ. And here's why, Philippians chapter 3 verse 9, Paul says that I may be found in Christ, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Not having a righteousness of my own. Well, what's wrong with my righteousness? Oh, yes, I know I've done a few wrong things here and there, but, you know, I've done a lot of good things as well. Why can't my good deeds cancel out my bad deeds? Well, think about it. I hope this doesn't happen, but suppose somebody punched you in the face and then gave you a box of chocolates. Would the box of chocolates fix your broken nose? Well, I think we all know that when we'd eaten all the chocolates, our poor old nose would still be bent out of shape. The chocolates wouldn't fix your nose, nor would they remove the fact that the person who punched you was guilty of assault. Or think of another example. I suppose someone, oh, let's give them a name. What about a local name? Let's call them Edward Colston. Suppose someone called Edward Colston was a slave trader. Bad, bad, bad. I hope we can all agree on that. But suppose this same Edward Colston gave a lot of money to charity. Good, good, good. Just think children in need. Would the good thing that Edward Colston have done cancel out the bad thing that he had done? Well, not if you were one of the slaves. You see, I make no comment on what should happen to Edward Colston's statue. That's not the question we're looking at. Simply this, that our good deeds can't erase our bad deeds, nor can they undo our guilt for our bad deeds. Now, here's where the rubber meets the road. What's true of Edward Colston is also true of Edward Larkman. You see, when I point the finger at Edward Colston, three fingers are pointing back at me, because just like Edward Colston, I am a mixture of the good and the bad. Even the best of my good is actually tinged with bad, and my bad is downright horrible. I cannot hope to stand before a good God with a patchwork life made up of the good, the bad, and the ugly, uh, and then still plead not guilty. Oh, don't worry about those bad mucky bits and just cover them up. Look at the good bits on my patchwork. They're, not, they're rather nice, aren't they? Very fetching. <laughs> I cannot do that. I need a better righteousness than my own. I need Christ's righteousness because only Christ's righteousness is perfect. He lived the perfect life I should have lived. He died the terrible, awful death that I should have died. And praise God, he did both as my substitute. And when I take him as my king, and by faith I am joined to him, he takes my rubbish and he gives me in exchange his perfect righteousness. And when I get to the pearly gates, I don't rely on my righteousness. I, I don't produce this patchwork of the good, the bad and the ugly and say, well, won't this do? No, I rely on Jesus and his perfect righteousness. And Jesus saying, he's with me, let him in. All that is mine, says Jesus, is now yours because you are my child. His real goodness, not my imaginary goodness, that's what I need. And so do you, my friend. Without it, we're sunk. With it, we are saved. And all the riches of Christ are ours. Not having a righteousness of my own, but that which is through faith in Christ, writes Paul. Is that you? Let's pray. 
Thank you, Father, that Jesus is the perfect saviour for people like us. Help us by your spirit to place our whole trust in him and to live with him as our king. Amen. God bless you, friends. Bye for now.